Good morning. Good morning, Jace. How are you? I'm doing really, really well. Welcome to Microsoft Ignite. Thanks. It's, it's, been, it's, been, a, it's been a great, great show so far. Yeah, uh, this is day two. Technically for us, it's day three because we were here for an MVP pre-day. But man, it's, uh, it has been lively, energetic, and fun so far. And we weren't even out very late last night. My mom would be very proud of us. Yeah, well, it, it happens sometimes. Yeah, we, we had to uh, make sure that we got to bed nice and early. So we were here bright and early for the live show, unfortunately. Those of you who are watching this are watching it uh, recorded, and that's okay. We had uh, Facebook was having issues. The crew here is amazing. So, you know, we're, we're blaming Facebook. Uh, so, but we have a special guest with us this morning, John. We do. We, we, uh, we were lucky enough to get Josh Kaplan to come and join us this morning. How you doing, Josh? Great. Happy to be here. Good. Could you, would you mind telling everybody uh, sure. who you are, what, what, what your preferences are, all that? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the uh, group program manager for Power BI Premium and uh, analysis services and the multiple forms we ship it in now. <laughs> multiple Multiple forms and increasing we ship forms. In. Yeah. That's, I, I haven't heard that <laughs> Is before. this when we go, you're the guy? He's the guy, yeah. <laughs> depends on <laughs> depends on the form, but yeah. <laughs> we've uh, yeah we've talked about premium quite a lot on the show over the last year, or so ever since it came out, uh, that's I think a big we topic. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I I think we got the licensing thing put to bed, and that's all understood and explained out now. It took a while, but I think people <laughs> have started to grok what that what the licensing scheme looks like. Uh, I think that they're still a little bit confused between the premium options. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, a premium capacity Just being skews. EM versus, yeah, I mean, it's always a thing. And the fact that all the SKUs are referred to as premium instead of shared capacity, which sure. I think is the preferred term, yeah. Yeah, the... Um we were good at having multiple different SKUs just to make sure make it as easy as possible, you know. Of course, um, of course. <laughs> but yeah, I, my spin on the, uh, the the differences between pro and premium, uh, you know, pro, you're, pro you're paying per user per month, um, but we're basically taking care of everything for you. you know, we're making sure there's enough capacity there. Um, all you need to do when you're planning out what you need for your for your implementation is how many users you're going to have, and make sure you have enough licenses. Um, but you have to then go per user. Uh, and we put certain restrictions on you to make sure we can properly manage you and everything works great. Um, versus premium, where you can have as many users as you want on that capacity, viewing content. Um, but you're now responsible for making sure that you have the right amount of capacity um, to, make, to uh, support that, those users. So it's, it's kind of like going back to capacity planning with servers and testing out your workloads and making sure you have, have the right stuff there. But if you do that, you can get you know, as many as many users as you as you need on there. Very cool. Well, you and I had a quick conversation yesterday. I dropped by the booth and got to meet more of the team than I had gotten to meet before, which is very cool. It's one of the reasons why coming to things like Ignite is a lot of fun because I got to meet you finally. You got to meet Amanda. Uh, and You've just, met Amanda. I have I not did. yet met Amanda. I have yes, to meet Amanda. Sure she, she is uh, <laughs> shorter in person than I thought she was. Or, that's what everybody says. Well, you know, but we're really tall. So that's, that's true. That's sort of normal. But um, so. When part of the conversation that we had yesterday was about you know the fact that you came to this world a different way. This was not like <laughs> you know, a stork. <laughs> it was you know, from a cabbage land, patch or something. I, I was thinking landed through an immediate. <laughs> I'm trying right to remember the conversation. <laughs> you, you, know, you came to, to being a program manager, you know, uh, differently. So I spent. Um, I actually started. Oh, I started as a developer. I was an intern actually at Microsoft in 2007. Now, um, wow. and I was on the. Project Gemini, which eventually became Power Pivot, uh, which eventually became Tabular, which eventually <laughs> became Power BI. Um, and then I uh, went back, finished school, and came back as a developer on actually the internal sales reporting platform. So every, every Microsoft product gets purchased from the various different uh, avenues of making purchases. We would aggregate everything up, and we'd do all the, the sales reporting out to uh, you know, the sales field, and at the time, Balmer, and uh, you know, the rest of the executives. Then after that, I actually switched to being a PM on the, the Bing team. Oh, wow. Um, on the Bing, it was the Ad Center BI team. So you purchase ads that show up on Bing or Yahoo. Uh, we have reports that you can see how your, how your ads are doing, how many people are seeing them. Um, and there's all kinds of charts and, and, and uh, data we would pull so, so you could do, so you could see how you're, you know, how you're actually performing. Um, and as a PM there, we developed a, a couple cool things that I really wanted to use. So I switched back to being a developer and uh, spent a couple years uh, as a, a BI developer on there and some really big data um, before finally coming back to where I started oh, um, on the Power Pivot team for about 
six months, and then this guy named James Phillips comes in and says, I think we should do uh, Power BI, and, um, or another Power BI, and um, yeah, reboot. things have changed since then. So it's been, a, it's been a fun now 10 plus years at Microsoft. Cool. Fantastic. I, you know, I first came across you when you were in, doing dev for Power BI, I believe, and that was, I think I first met you at uh, Ignite in Chicago 2015, and you were doing a really killer demo, if you ask me. Those were fun. So the real time, I, the first features I worked on uh, when we redid Power BI was, um, or relaunched Power BI, I owned all the ISV capabilities, uh, which included at the time content packs. We, we, we first released Power BI, we had it, I think, six of them at the time. Yep. And it was... Uh, we, we were number 24, <laughs> by the way. We were number 24. <laughs> it was, uh, I was mostly working on the, the infrastructure and the platform pieces of it, and then it was, uh, you know, the rest of the PM team, we were all just kind of actually making the actual content packs themselves. Uh, I think we were manually editing XMLA and stuff to get the thing actually working in Power BI at the time, because chicken and egg, Power BI didn't exist, and the content packs didn't exist, and we're building them both at the same time, so it was whatever yep. we could do to get everything out at the same time. Um, and I own the APIs, and eventually uh, Power BI embedded. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, real time was was, an, was at the time was an API scenario, and that was a amazing feature to demo. I'd always been doing uh, more back end features, and uh, it was great to have something that uh, was just really fun to show off. And uh, yeah, the demo I think we showed there. We showed probably the sound one. You, well, yeah, I, it was the heart rate model. Heart rate. Yeah, heart that's rate where model. it was. Wukash and I doing a presentation and. Uh, we were monitoring our heart rates throughout, and I guess he didn't didn't prefer me speaking for a lot of the time. I guess As his could, heart rate just you could literally see on the screen while they were speaking what each speaker's heart rates were. It was it was a very very cool demo. Yeah, we stuff to get to the bottom of that, but yeah, <laughs> it showed well. I mean, let's put it, it definitely that way. did. So. Uh, you have a couple of questions that you'd written down that uh, we, we get to zing them with. A few, we, well, we, hmm. we could try. Well, I, first thing, I guess, generally, you, you're doing premium now, et cetera, and that thing's been going on for about a year. How would you say that whole uh, experience has been over the last year? Premium's been going great. Um, like you said, a ton of interest in it, um, getting a lot of adoption. The, um, you know, the biggest things that we've kind of learned in the last year um, is that you know, we were managing the capacities. Yep. Um, you, know, you, you just publish your models. As long as they work reasonably well, you're happy. Um, you know, now as you're as you're in charge of the capacity, you're you know, a lot of customers are a lot. Uh, I'd say I don't know, picky is the right word, but um, <laughs> careful about uh, you know how they're how efficient they're, efficiently they're using their capacity. They have right. models that are consuming a lot of memory. They want to be able to identify those and work with the, their users to fix those. Um, and get the most uh, efficient use out of the capacities they're purchasing, um, and also you know you have to you have to uh, learn what a capacity is capable of, and there's yeah. no one answer for that. There's what's your workload, how many users, what types of queries, how many visuals on the report, all these different factors that key into that, and you have to know how to uh, test those, and um, you have to be able to see results of those tests. So um, I came to Premium, I believe, back in I'm going to say March now. Um, uh, after being on the uh, after launching an Azure Analysis Services, um, and uh, during that time, we've been doing a lot of work to make Premium uh, a lot more explainable, so we can give uh, better guidance. And also, we've been releasing we just started releasing uh, new metrics that show really how how the capacity is being used and by what, and so you can actually even trace it back to the workspaces and the users that are are um, doing or using those things or creating those data sets. Yeah, yeah that, cool. that's, that's very, very important. And having some of those controls around it. I know we're lucky we use A capacities as an ISV, <laughs> and we've run into a couple of cases where they we get a runaway query can take down the whole thing. So yeah. at least we can stop and start it. Yeah, I found it really <laughs> interesting. We had dinner with Amir Nets <laughs> last night, and he, we, were, we were talking about premium, and one of the analogies that he used in the conversation was sort of like a leasing a car versus buying a car. Yeah. When you lease a car, you kind of can run it ragged and you know they're, they're, they, they take care of the maintenance and all that but when you buy the car and you have to pay for all the maintenance <laughs> yourself you're a lot more careful and that that was the analogy used on premium was you now own the car and it's your responsibility if you go you know go crazy on the highways you got to buy the new tires yeah. you know all that so. and yeah which we, we want to make it as, as easy as possible but you know let's say you have a bunch of models on there that are working but they're using up a lot of memory a lot of cpu um, and now you want to add more models, you can 
get more capacity, which we're happy with. Um, but uh, often, more often, people want to see, okay, well, why is this using so much capacity, and what can we do about it? And you know, then you end up getting into managing these things, and you you you, you get, like you said, it's your it's your car. You get, um, you know, you're very invested in how it works. Yeah. Well, I think it, it's also underlying the fact that I mean, Power BI has been so so successful, and it has reached such a wide audience, which was totally the intended goal really democratize BI out there, but you've got people building models that don't necessarily know about all the best practices. This is we got more people doing that than me, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit of a victim of your own success from that standpoint, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, I, think, I think it's exposing a little bit of that, and people are going to have to get smarter about the way they build some of these things if it's going to be used in any large kind of mm -hmm. production capacity. And we're going to have to make sure we, we equip uh, our users with the right tools to be able to, to you know, really manage these things. Yeah, there, and there's, uh, there was, uh, there's a tool coming, um, I can't remember the name of the v vendor you're working with, uh, around doing that. Yeah, there's one coming, um, I'm going to get in trouble for forgetting the name. <laughs> Sorry, I did too. <laughs> so you did something. Um, the, uh, so we're, we're doing a lot of work right now to make uh, Power BI as capable and more capable than analysis services. Um, Power BI is under the covers analysis services. Right. Um, and we expose a lot of the AS functionality. When you're in the Power BI desktop, you're, you're creating a model in analysis services locally on your machine. When you load it up to Power BI, we, it's actually a, an ABF back, backup file inside that PBIX file that we load and run it on a, one of our servers running in Power BI. And um, it is AS, but we've never actually exposed it all to you. Right. Uh, when, when you hit the limits of Power BI, or you need something that we didn't expose to you, you went to analysis services. So yep. one of the things we're, we're doing now is exposing those things. And exposing them in a in a in a very Power BI way, yep. um, but also making sure that things that work with AS will continue to work uh, with Power BI directly. Now, is it's, this the conversation we were having about XMLA? Yes. Aha. Yes. Uh -huh. The so, XMLA endpoint. Yeah. yeah. So yes. John was trying to explain this to me, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I I was I was struggling just a little bit. So maybe you can help us understand when people start hearing mm -hmm. about the XMLA, XMLA endpoint, things like that. Yeah, XMLA is the protocol that. Um, the AS client uses to connect to the AS server. Um, which, so when you're in Excel, you're in uh, Power BI, you're in some other uh, tool, um, you know, yeah. lots of different tools will Management connect. Management Studio. Management Studio, and even, even non-Microsoft tools. Um, they all go through one of the AS client libraries to connect. You don't technically need the library, but it's a lot easier. <laughs> um, and uh, they will, you know, if you go into Excel, you can say connect to analysis services database. You'll put in a server name. It'll bring you back a list of databases on that server. You pick that database, and then it'll you know, open up the pivot table or whatever you, you connected to. And you can start dragging and dropping and running queries. All that's happening through XMLA. All that's happening by uh, Excel is running certain commands on, uh, on the server to discover the databases that are there. Um, and uh, then they're looking at the metadata of those databases to go ahead and generate queries based on what you drag in there. Um, well, with Power BI, we don't have servers. Right. We have now capacities with premium, but um, that's not an end user concept. That's uh, you have a capacity admin. You know, someone who uploads a uh, uh, Power BI report doesn't necessarily, or a Power BI data set doesn't necessarily know which capacity they're on. They're just right. uploading to a workspace. So, uh, without servers, what we're doing now is we're saying, okay, well, the workspace will be your server. So you'll be able to put in as a server name now. You'll be able to put in a URL to a uh, Power BI workspace. Okay. We will. Excel will send the same commands it, it would send to the AS server to get the list of databases. We will give you a list of all the databases that are in that, in this case, they'd be data sets in Power BI terminology, um, that are in that workspace. And you pick that one, uh, the one you want, and it will connect just like it was an AS server. This also gives us lots of opportunities to um, connect uh, in things that aren't just doing reads. Um, so SSMS, give you that fine grain access to all the different parts of the model. Um, give you uh, SSDT, which will have all the um, right. source control Visual, pieces in there, yeah. um, all the, the features that don't, haven't quite gotten to desktop yet. Um, and then uh, you can also do diagnostics. Um, so profiler is one thing we want to make sure we, we get working on there. Um, and it'll, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of things profiler, to release. That's cool. um, yeah. So you know, it'll, it'll, it'll pro probably come out in stages, but it's something we're really looking forward to. And the tool you alluded to um, is using AMO, our, our, our object model, to, uh, to actually go ahead and connect and uh, 
get the definition of a uh, get the definition of a model and take a local definition or a, or a definition of a model from a different location, compare them, diff them, uh, you know, nice. merge changes, uh, which is a pretty cool. It's a pretty cool tool when it comes out. It's really uh, based hot. on a tool that uh, Christian Wade built a while back called Business Normalizer. Okay. Um, I don't quite get the name, but um, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that, that, that's the, okay. I'm sure I'll have to get another explanation. But the um, you know, there's great demos out there of how that works, and it'll be a very similar tool. So in, in theory, um, we'd be able to do anything with Power BI data models that we could do with an analysis services data model. And more. Anything, right? Yep. So, and so we, you know, we get into things like partitioning, right? Partitioning, absolutely. So that would be logically another interface for doing incremental refresh. Yeah, and then we've also, so yes, you'll have access to do partitions. We've also added uh, to Power BI this refresh policies, which will yes. automatically handle the partitioning right. for you. And you'll have fine-grained access to, to that as well, going through XMLA. That's awesome. Um, and there's a lot more options in there than we're, what we're just exposing the UI to desktop. So when that happens, when we have all of that stuff, and that's that's not that far off, right? I mean, in, in the It's a work in progress now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're working on it now. We know how your team works. So probably, you know, this <laughs> two, is me saying probably weeks. a couple of weeks <laughs> yeah. from now. Yeah. <laughs> These are some deeper features. Yeah. Uh, they, will, they do take some time, but uh, they, they are. Yeah, they're, they're not fantasies right now, they are in, in progress. But once this stuff lands, where does uh, Azure Analysis Services mm -hmm. fit vis-a-vis -vis what we'll have in, like why would I use analysis, uh, Azure Analysis Services if I have this? I mean, we want Power BI to be you know, the one-stop place for your self-service BI, for your uh, you know, IT-driven BI, for your AI, for everything. Uh, you know, our uh, paginated reports from RS are coming yes. soon. Um, is going to be that one place where you don't need anything else. And if we do our jobs right, you wouldn't necessarily need uh, another form of analysis services. Yeah, but that answers my we've question. We've said that for many years. <laughs> um, you know, analysis services still plays a very huge role. Um, sure. It's a uh, yeah, it, it's very big on prem. It's been moving yes. to Azure Analysis Services very rapidly. And you know, we will continue to grow and support that for you know for a long time. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, Power BI, yeah. Power BI, um, Power BI will become AI. Yeah, I would I would think so. Yeah, there, uh, to put it a different way, I wasn't really asking about the future of analysis or Azure Analysis Services, but it's more, it's more like if I'm making a decision about which road to go, why would I pick anything else other than Power BI? And this it sounds it sounds like I wouldn't. But there's, I mean, there's the timing aspect of it right now. Right, obviously. But um, yeah. Yeah. The, the goal is that we make it um, simple enough that uh, to move it to Power BI, you just redeploy. That's excellent. Um, That's, yeah, I, I, that, that, that sounds really nice. And it sounds like uh, just based on, the, uh, on the, the workload costs of Azure Analysis Services, this might be a more consumable model from a business perspective as well, which is mm -hmm. great for people. Um, I, I, the, the zinger question, and it was only a zinger because uh, we, we had some drinks last night with some of the, some of the members of the team. Um, they mentioned the fact that you just took over Multigeo. And oh, okay. we, we were chatting before and, and making a little bit of a joke. Um, but uh, know that it's something brand new that you just took over, uh, but it's, a, it's of interest for a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. And it's good to know that that, the product, that, that part of the product is in, in good hands. Yep. Not that anybody wouldn't be in good hands, but <laughs> you know. And it's so. out there now in preview. Uh, we're uh, one of the first things I got uh, I to do right now, or my team is working on, is you know what do we need to do? Just get it to GA. Um, it's being used by some customers now who it's enough for them. Is but if it was, if, as long as it wasn't preview. So <laughs> we, we have to take it, we have to get those final steps, and we you know going forward we want to try to do uh, less things in preview for less amount of times, um, get things to GA much quicker, um, unless there's things that we really need a heavy feedback on that will dramatically change before we GA. Um, so it's it's one we're, 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 we 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 know a lot of people are uh, needing it, and we are we are pushing forward. Yeah, it'll be great once it's there. It's great that it's available in preview for folks today to be able to go off and use as well. Yeah, I think Themes was in preview for like a year, and it didn't need to be. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, but how much of that was yeah. ADA compliance yeah, yeah, and whatnot yeah. that it had to get through? Uh, the yeah, visual but side of things is as always, as opposed to the back end side of things. We right? want people so. to use everything we're putting out there, so yep. it's, it's got to be ready. It's got to be complete. And, I love you know. the way it's done. I love the way it's pushed out. Let you try it. You, you, you bump your head a little bit. That's okay. You should expect that. But and then you, you, when it goes GA, it's GA. Yeah. 
I know that we're we're bumping towards the back half of time here, yep. uh, so we want to be respectful of the. Uh, you know, we've been given the gift of this wonderful podcasting Pretty center cool. and all of that. It's been great to be here at Ignite, uh, John. I'm going to ask you, and I will ask you as well, Josh. Uh, what's the the thing that's impressed you most? What what and impressed or depressed? Either way you want to go. Hopefully, it's positive. Uh, just because it's morning, we need positivity this morning. Uh, what have you found with Ignite this year so far? At the show, me personally, because I can only answer personally. <laughs> um, we've got a booth here this year, and we've never had a booth at Ignite before. And we happen to be releasing a, a, a version of TyGraph for teams, analytics for the teams. Um, and we're just thrilled and excited about being able to do it. And the amount of interest in it uh, just yesterday has, has stunned me. I've never seen a, I've never seen a show uh, quite so much. So that's really what's hit me over the head for the show. But I guess uh, uh, the show itself, it's really, really well organized this year, if you ask me. It's, I'm comparing it to previous years. It's night and day better, um, better feel for you know, how easy it is to get from place to place. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to do some shameless plugs then. There you go. Please uh, do. Please do. Yeah, the biggest feature that I'm looking forward to and that we're showing today, um, you know, in addition to what we just talked about with, that's coming to Power BI, that's uh, kind of the future of of data within within Power BI. Um, you know, it's something that when I was uh, doing BI on, on Bing, when we had lots of large data um, that we were thinking about doing back then, I'm so happy to finally see it released, which is this aggregations feature, which is oh, coming out. I love the aggregations This feature. will change Can a I lot of things. That? Yeah, but, but you haven't asked him about it yet. So no, we I know. But we did right talk to Christian it, so. about it quite a bit. So. <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, this will you know, really change what you can do with, with uh, tabular models today. Um, you know, Christian does the demo where we have a trillion rows in there, you know, quarter petabyte of data. It's great wow. for that. It's great for much smaller sizes of the data too. You know, if you look at the data that you use in reports, it's usually much more summarized, much higher level. But you still need the other stuff, the lower level. Um, and with, with, with aggregations, you can have it in there. You can have everything in one model. Finally, you can have everything in one model, um, and regardless of the size. And um, you can make the very common stuff extremely fast. And even the stuff that goes now will fall, miss the aggregations and fall back to direct query mode, uh, you can still make very fast. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you will actually take a lot of load off of your direct query source at that point. So the majority of your queries will hit a cache, which you can almost think like an index now, which will answer the queries very fast without sending those queries to the source. Leaving those sources, those source databases available to actually answer queries that really need to go there. Um, you kind of get the best of both worlds. And with aggregations, there's all kinds of things in there that let you mix and match sources, have aggregations of multiple different sources, multiple direct query sources, uh, in memory, everything. So it's a, it's a really cool feature to check out and see, you know, learn in depth. There's a, there's a lot of stuff you can do in there. Yeah, we're, we're actively mm -hmm. diving into it for our product, so yeah. thank, thank you so much for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been a, a very hot topic since you guys announced it. It's been great. Uh, for me, here at the show, uh, the, the community, Yes. Aspect. You know, yeah. the, the way that the hall is laid out this year is very focused on the community. You have the expo hall and then this whole massive wing that is dedicated to community. You've got diversity in tech, you've got an idea swap lounge, the Microsoft Learn, you've got the, the whole podcast studio, which we'll be in tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Uh, it's really, and that one we will go live on, on Facebook Live. Uh, if, if, the it tech works, works. if it works. If it works. Yeah. That, Facebook, what can you do? Uh, but yeah, so for me, it, that, that's that been the aspect that's really been great. Um, I felt that, uh, I made the comment yesterday that it's, even though I know there are over 28,000 people here, it hasn't felt cramped. It hasn't felt like no, overwhelming, yeah. except leaving the keynote yesterday with that four escalators, that was a little crazy. But uh, I bailed it was, on it early. Yeah, well. <laughs> How's the commute between the sessions this year? Uh, it's better, been better right? than, than previous years. Uh, and the fact that everything is streamed as well uh, yes. means that if, if I look at something and say, that's in South Building and I've got the next session I really want to go to is in West, I can just go sit down and watch it. There's this massive video board over there. You can just go watch for a little while. And you know they have your ear, they give us earphones. You know, so you can just plug in, take a listen. It's really very nice. Um, and it's been a very good experience thus far. Just the overall feel. Uh, the Rackspace booth, I haven't gotten to spend much time at because we've been doing so much stuff here as we usually do for Ignite. But I want to say thank you for coming by. Yeah, thank you for having me. To, to interview you. Any closing thoughts, anything else you want to make sure that our listeners know? I mean, keep sending us feedback. Uh, we, 
We have a lot of big things coming out now, um, and they're a start. And we need to do the next things, and the next things, and the next things, and the feedback really helps guide us uh, in that direction. Awesome. Perfect. John? We'll see you tomorrow. I, well, I'll see you after this because we we're, we're, we're off to the, the Power BI sub keynote with uh, Amir and Arun. So Is that now? That's about to happen yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to wrap. It's great to talk to you guys. Look forward to, uh, to the next one tomorrow.